a journey through the mists. The Israeli side of the Golan Heights usually provides a good vantage point to observe events unfolding across the border in Syria. But during the winter months, this isn't always the case. When we joined up with an IDF officer for a tour of the border region, a heavy fog had set in, lending the terrain a ghostly, almost otherworldly quality. In Syria, the cold weather often leads to lulls in the fighting. It's difficult for everyone in the winter, I think. Everyone prefers to be indoors. That's true for the rebels as well. Most of the border region on the Syrian side is currently controlled by rebel groups and not the regime. Radical Islamist factions have been the dominant force here, as in other places. What you see behind me here is the Kunetra border crossing, which leads from Israeli territory into Syrian territory here on the Golan Heights. The other side of this facility is currently manned by a Syrian rebel organization, specifically Jabhat Fatah al-Sham, formerly known as the al-Nusra, formerly tied to al-Qaeda. Despite the al-Qaeda connection of the current neighbors, Israel prefers their presence to that of the regime and its allies. There's a radical axis involving Iran and Hezbollah, and the work with the Syrian regime. So I expect that these forces may be present in regime-controlled territory. They're not out in the open. I don't expect there to be Hezbollah or Iranian forces present in rebel territory, here near the border fence. To monitor the delicate situation along the border, the IDF has installed a range of advanced systems, including high-tech cameras and motion sensors. We were allowed into a special control center where soldiers watch a multitude of screens looking for suspicious activity. The system can pick up on several movements simultaneously, and we, using the judgment of human monitors combined with the technology, can decide what's important for us and what we want to investigate. Last November, these soldiers identified what turned out to be a border attack by forces aligned with Islamic State. We have a monitor here of high quality who identified something suspicious in combination with a report from forces on the ground. We alerted the whole sector. We were also involved in the response and directing the fire towards the target. No idea if soldiers were injured in the attack, an Israeli Air Force strike killed four militants who were involved. Other incidents that occur along this border are of a less hostile nature. In recent years, thousands of injured Syrians have been brought into Israel for treatment. When they arrive at the border, they're first spotted on these screens. Sometimes we'll see them approaching by foot, sometimes on donkeys. Usually they walk towards the fence. We alert the forces which are prepared to receive the injured. They are brought into Israel, given full treatment and sent back. I'm a father of children, and there are plenty of humanitarian cases of women and children. And it's difficult. It's very difficult to see a young injured child. It affects you as a father, and it gives you a good feeling that you are at least able to help someone. Here with me, senior defense correspondent Shai ben -Ari and Iranian politics analyst Mayor Javed Anfar. Thanks very much for being here. So Shai, this report, uh, in addition to those threats that you outlined there that we heard from them, there's a new unit linked to Hezbollah that they have to be concerned about. Right. We see, received word of this uh, this week and also some footage has emerged of this new unit which du dubbed itself the Golan Liberation Brigade. It's part of one of these Shiite militias which is already involved in the fighting in Syria. It's in fact Iraqi by origin, but of course receives a lot of support from Iran. It's part of a force known as the al-Nujba force, a, one, again one of those Shiite militias. It is thought to have already taken part in some fighting in northern Syria. It is not yet deployed to the Golan border, but of course the name intimates that the, that may be part of the plan in the future. That would be a very aggressive uh, uh, act, just deploying to the Golan a force this large. And I'm not sure that, that that's going to happen in the immediate future. Certainly, I, I would think that if it's done out in the open, Israel would respond quite immediately. I would think that perhaps it'll be a little more discreet when it does happen. And just something worth noting, I mean, when we take a look at this video, the editing, the style, I have to say it sort of recalls Islamic State videos right. in terms of the, the propaganda aspect. Islamic State has really reshaped the whole uh, way of thinking when it comes to media in terms of what people, a lot of people call terrorist organizations, militant organizations. We see Hamas also meeting that standard, that bar which has been raised by Islamic State, no, no one else really. All the groups uh, who act along in, in this way, along these lines, really feel that they have to meet that standard these days. And it's been very effective in terms of their recruitment efforts as well. So let's zoom out for a moment on 
Syria as a whole, just across the border, really Syria and Lebanon. If you're talking about this group Hezbollah, obviously uh, Iran is a big part of that. Let's just take a look at what Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah said in June of last year. We are open about the fact that Hezbollah's budget, its income, its expenses, everything it eats and drinks, its weapons and rockets come from the Islamic Republic of Iran. Mayor, that's pretty clear. Just how much presence does Iran have, first of all, in the Golan Heights? Um, we don't know, to give you the honest answer. But um, we know that they're on the Lebanese uh, border already. Um, it is possible that for now, as the map showed, uh, the, our, our neighbors are right now uh, Fat al Sham right. and, uh, and ISIS. Right. And, and the regime and has a very small, a very small So maybe in that small segment of where the regime is holding. We have to wait and see how the war between the regime and the, and the Sunni terrorist organizations who are now a border also mm. goes. If they manage to defeat them and to occupy that area and then bring in some of these people and uh, Nujba front uh, for, the, for the Golan or whatever they're called, then, it, then it's time to, to worry. Shai, is it possible to say what Israel is most concerned about when looking over all those sort of options across the border? Right. Of course, the Golan front is perhaps the, the biggest concern because of its proximity. But in general, because of the political uh, developments that we've seen and really the end game, which you can see is beginning, you could say, in terms of the future of Syria, we're, we're heading towards the the, the end end of the conflict apparently with Islamic State around Raqqa and people are already start, starting to speak about all the political formulas in terms of what the future of Syria will hold. Uh, Israel is pr primarily concerned about what kind of stake Iran will have in that future and that's the message I think that Netanyahu is trying to convey both to the American administration, the new one, and to uh, the Russian president that Israel simply cannot accept a major uh, Iranian stake in the future of Syria. Certainly nothing in, entailing a naval base uh, on the Mediterranean, certainly nothing on the Golan Front.